that uh, we'll be on the ground um, in Guatemala uh, at about uh, in about a half hour or so. We'll be on the ground in Guatemala in about a half hour. Perkin, I'm sorry, that was you. We'll be on the ground in about a half hour. Bando, the weather is from, that's the weather gauge from um, Active Sky Next. So that's part of Active Sky Next. Um, yeah, it's part of Active Sky Next. And because we're approaching the descent there, I am going to get rid of that. Yeah, officially you can do it in the Concorde. They've got in-flight reverse in the Concorde. Unfortunately, with the, the uh, FS Labs Concorde, even with in-flight reverse, I've never been able to descend on uh, uh, and arrive at the waypoint that I wanted to arrive at at the appropriate altitude. UK flight. Lambert, we'll do some this weekend. We'll do some this weekend. Perkin, the uh, flight was uh, 2 hours 26 minutes, roughly. I forgot to start my lapse timer, but it was roughly 2 hours 26 minutes, or it will have been roughly. A little bit longer than that. We're going to come in low and slow because we've got a procedure turn. Uh, SG, it's just a kind of a badge of honor. Uh, the Southwest guys that we've talked to try to uh, fly kind of like, you know, cowboy mentality. And uh, they, they try not to use the speed brakes if they don't have to. They try to stay fast as long as they can. So it's just more or less a... Uh, you, you try to be able to do it, I guess they do, without using a speed brakes. In the 800 series, I, there's no shame with using speed brakes. Um, in the 800 series, in the winter, when you're definitely oftentimes going to be using uh, anti-ice, um, <laughs> every flight I've ever been on in the UK <laughs> when I'm using anti-ice, um, uh, there's no shame in using the, the, uh, the speed brakes. No shame in it at all. So I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, male pride, there you go. Lambert, I hadn't thought of it yet. Now, so, this is the, we're demonstrating late descent here. So, the uh, CDU is telling me that I need to reset the MCP altitude. We're not going to do that. We're going to be late. I'm getting a little warning here. Pretty soon you'll see my VNAV path indicator pop up, and I'll start to demonstrate what that looks like when you're above your VNAV path. That'll become available here as we approach the top of descent. But what I want you to watch as soon as we miss our top of descent here, and we haven't lowered the MCP altitude, in other words, we've, we've been given a late descent, I want you to watch the speed of the aircraft. The aircraft is going to take action on our behalf, and it's going to begin to slow down to compensate for the late descent. It will slow all the way down to your bug up maneuvering speed. It will slow all the way down, uh, and I want you to watch that. So, if we were in an online environment right now, and we hadn't gotten our top of descent, what you would want to do is hit speed intervene to open up your speed window so that the plane did not start to slow down on its own because ATC, ATC is not going to want you to do that. So you just watch here, we're now 90 feet, 100 feet, 200 feet, close to a, above our VNAV path. So you consider that kind of like a glide slope and you get the same thing here. We are, if you consider this a glide slope, we're now above our VNAV path by about 500 feet. We'll get to 2,000 feet above our VNAV path, and then I'll show you how to correct it. But I want you to watch here and see as the speed automatically, it is real world weather, yeah. The speed is automatically slowing, and that's to compensate for the fact that we haven't started descending yet. And again, that, that speed will, I have taken no action. The, the plane's taking this action on our behalf. It will descend, it will slow all the way down to the bug up maneuvering speed. And we are now approaching 2,000 feet. We'll get to 3,000 feet above our VNAV path, and then I'll, I'll intervene. So we're 2,000 feet above our VNAV path now. Again, the aircraft is slowing to compensate. And then as we approach 3,000 feet above our VNAV path, I'll begin to demonstrate how we can reclaim our VNAV path. And essentially, the tool that we're going to use is we're going to give the aircraft um, more speed to descend with. And so the speed that it wants to descend at is 280. We're going to give it more speed than that. Okay, so we're going to reduce the MCP altitude now. We're going to descend down to 11,000 feet. We'll hit altitude intervene here to begin the descent. 
the speed will slowly start to come back up. We don't have to do anything. The speed will slowly start to come back up. You see we are now approaching 4,000 feet above our VNAV path. As we approach our target airspeed of 280 knots in the descent, I will open up the speed window and I'm going to give it more speed to descend with. More forward speed in the descent means greater descent rate. So that's that'll be the, the plan. LNAV, uh, official LNAV is lateral navigation, that's left and right. VNAV is vertical navigation, up and down. And we're in both right now. It essentially means that the plane is flying based on what we have programmed in the uh, flight management computer. So you see the speed is picking back up to our desired descent rate towards 280 knots. We're already reclaiming our VNAV path a bit. Why are we already reclaiming our VNAV path? Well, that's because we've been able to get 5,000 feet per minute in the descent as we speed up towards 280 knots. That will, um, that will moderate a little bit as we see as we have to start to slow as we reach 280 our descent rate will necessarily decrease but if you look you'll see that we're still a thousand feet above our VNAV path and that's no good so how do we correct that okay how we correct that is by opening up the speed window we do Tom we absolutely do so we're gonna open up the speed window and I'm gonna give the plane another 20 knots to descend with now you can give the plane as much speed as is available. I mean, we're right up there by the barbicle. But we're going to give the we're going to give the plane as much speed as we can. And as we reclaim our VNAV path, which we're doing now, we're not going to give the CDU or the FM uh, the flight management system. We're not going to give the flight management system control of the speed until we're about a thousand feet below our VNAV path. And the reason for that is, as soon as I give control of the speed back to the CDU we're going to lose 20 knots. And in losing 20 knots, our descent rate is necessarily going to decrease substantially for a few minutes while we slow. So what we'll do is we'll wait till we get a little bit below our VNAV path, maybe not a thousand feet, but we'll get below our VNAV path. Maybe 500 feet, something like that. Now you see, I can even give the plane another 10 knots now that the envelope has increased for us here. So we're, we've now, we're, we're descending 30 knots faster than what the seat, what we have programmed in the CDU. And so now we're about 500 feet below VNAV path. I'll get to maybe 800 feet below VNAV path, maybe close to 1,000 feet below VNAV path, and then I will give control of the speed back to the CDU. So we're now 800 feet, almost 900 feet. I'm going to get closer to 1,000 feet here, and then I'll give control back to the CDU. When we do that, our descent rate's going to decrease substantially, but we've got about 1,000 feet buffer now. So I'm going to give control back to the CDU. The plane's going to begin to slow down back towards the 280, and it's going to use pitch to slow, which is why our descent rate is, has decreased substantially as we slow back down towards 280, which is our policy descent you see here at 280. And then now you'll see that it should be timed pretty close that when we get back to the 280 knots, we'll be closer to our, uh, uh, to our VNAV. We'll, we will have reclaimed our VNAV. And if we haven't, we just open up the speed window again and maybe give it 10 degrees more to descend with. We'll just kind of see what happens as we, as we reclaim our VNAV path here. We're still about 400 feet above our VNAV path, but you can see the VNAV path coming into play here. We're approximating that 280 knots, so it should be timed just about right here uh, from the looks of things. Just about 100 feet below our VNAV path, about 5 knots fast, and now we've, we've really reclaimed our VNAV path here, and we're back to the 280 knots that is what we've plugged in to be descending at 280 knots. So, there we have it. It is tornado. It works so well. Um, and again, so now, you know, next time you're given a late descent and you're in an online environment and, and we freak out because we do, we're like, yeah, I need to descend. I need to descend. My computer says descend. I've got top of descent on my screen. And ATC hasn't given you, um, ATC hasn't given you the descent. You know, you can do one of two things. You can call them and say, hey, you know, United 1500, we'd like to get lower. Can we get lower? Anything lower available? 
Um, and if they don't have it, then you don't need to freak out because now we've got a tool to reclaim that VNAV path by just opening up the speed window and giving the plane uh, more forward speed to descend with. Now keep in mind, um, I do, Perk and I have uh, scenery for Guatemala, keep in mind that wouldn't necessarily be an option below 10,000 feet because we're limited to 250 knots below 10,000 feet. So in that case, you may have to use a different strategy. Speed brakes, for instance, that's about all you can do in the 7.3. The 7.3 is designed to descend in clean configuration, so you really shouldn't use gear or flaps to assist, um, to provide drag to assist in the descent. There's a couple exceptions to that with certain approaches, but in a general sense, the 7.3 is designed to uh, to descend at, at uh, clean, in clean configuration all the way down to the point where you're going to start to configure for the landing. Transition level here, remember, is 20,000 feet, so we'll go ahead and hit the standard pressure there, 1022. And we'll be doing the uh, procedure turn here. If we ever pick up La Aurora, 114.5, I've selected to uh, get the ident for that just so I know when we're picking it up. I've also selected to display that data on the navigation display here. Uh, next time we do a flight, I'll demonstrate uh, what happens when we descend early. Like uh, ATC says, we're not expecting it, but ATC says, you know, they want us to go ahead and descend down to a, a lower altitude. Next time we make a flight in the 7.3, I'll demonstrate.